Gina Gay New Jawan, Nyayam Matthew, Nyayam Gumbangi Jamba. I'm the project coordinator for Coffs Harbour Local Aboriginal Land Council, and uh, Coffs Harbour Local Aboriginal Land Council has been engaged by Natural Resource Commission um, in, in a response to a request for a proposal for Aboriginal cultural values and renewal assessment in New South Wales forests post wildfires. It's got, it's got a focus, a major focus question, and that is uh, to what extent are Aboriginal values, knowledge and people involved in forest management and decision making? Coffs Harbour and District Local Aboriginal Land Council put together their own um, cultural impact survey team led by a senior cultural heritage site officer. My name's Ian Brown, I'm a Kumbangia man, so my job needs to take my younger assistants out as, and I could teach them how to, how to respect the landscape, how to read the landscape and pass on the knowledge that I have. Protocol number one should be acknowledgement that we've been here and we're still here. And then everything else has stemmed from that, right? So we were here, what happened when we were here? Yeah, the responsibilities are clearly defined. As simple as saying, protect this scar tree, protect this animal, protect this rock art, protect this place. The land is everything, but there's nothing else in the world. So I have to look after this place. I have, I have a a duty of care in it, in it. We all do as Aboriginal people. But back when our ancestors would go, okay, the animals are moving this way or it's getting to winter, now's a good time to start burning. Yeah. I think every Aboriginal loved fire burning. Yeah. <laughs> so our ancestors going, okay, now it's time to be able to do a burn. But because the Europeans were there going, no more burning. Australia was built on fire. The the plants were built on fire. So you can't stop something that's happened for thousands and thousands of years. We had them 2019-20 wildfires that um, come through and devastated a lot of country. They're just too hot, the wildfires, and they wipe out most of the scar trees. But nothing could have survived in that. And that high intensity fire is what is causing the big impacts to our cultural assets out in the bush. So there's not many cultural assets left, unfortunately, after the last um, wildfire season. Cultural items, so scar trees that are out there. Got, you know, really old scar trees, over a thousand years old, that are out there. And the bush will never return to its poor, former self. I don't think so. Not the Australian bush. Back to, it won't return back to Australian bush in our lifetime or my children's lifetime, or maybe not my, my grandchildren's lifetime. We don't want them fires to come back through again. We need to have more control over how they manage forests and their fires. The one that we, that we know that protects known and unknown cultural assets is putting cultural fire in. Well, it's a very good tool if handled correctly. We do cool burning, so we come in in the cooler parts of the year. When we light up the burn, it kind of is just trickling over the top layer of the ground. I understand that Rural Forest Service, National Parks and also Forestry have got a different aspect of how they like to do the burnings, but if you do more of a culture burn, at least you can say that's not going to actually destroy everything what's in sight. Locking up my sites. They're going to lock up one of my major sites. That a, an increased site, and, th and that's our that's our history. Not only not only to show people what trees used to be like in the day, but what damage we've done since we've been here. You know, you potentially lose um, you know, the the evidence of uh, occupation pre-European, which is important to preserve. Very important to preserve for our people. The people up high don't even hear what we say. Our old people managed to, managed to look after country for tens of thousands of years. They talk about us like uneducated blackfellas, 
But we're more educated than what they realise, you yeah. know. When it comes to when it comes to managing the forests and and, and land, we need to have more Aboriginal people in higher up seats in these government positions. Through cultural fire, through visitation, through respect, connection, knowing the country and the stories behind it, and. Um, we just got to reincorporate it into today's society. Yeah, instead of, instead of the government handing land over to national parks and forestry and places like that, how about them hand it back to the traditional owners? Yeah, exactly, and let us manage that area. Turn it back into healthy bush. And use the resources that are in those areas traditionally. I believe it's a way of um, re-establishing um, respectful, healthy relationship with country again, where we're trying to get country healthy again. Then we might start getting some sort of repair done to Australia. No, it's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen over a thousand nights either. 200 years to stop it, it's going to take more than 2,000 years to fix it. You know, we've got to start somewhere and it's got to be now.